everybody, this is Random NG. I'm going to show you my flexible brewing station, what it does and how to build it. Now this is the main control center. Any one of these buttons on the side will brew a potion with that as the main ingredient. And these levers back here will determine what modifiers are added to the potion. So uh, you have the glowstone for power or redstone for duration. Uh, you can turn on the, uh, the spider eye to corrupt the effect or turn on the gunpowder to add the splash effect. Uh, to demonstrate, I'll just make a regular uh, extended speed potion. So just turn that to redstone and the button. And all the items are shot out of droppers and flow down into this brewing stand. So we can see the nether wart there and the sugar and redstone all queued up. And we can just say if we want to make a um, fire resist potion, we just hit this magma cream and it goes and all the items flow into the next brewer down. So this one is still brewing the uh, speed potion and this one is brewing the fire resist potion. So I can say, oh, let's make a uh, water breathing potion. And okay, well maybe we want to make a, uh, a uh, invisibility potion. So we corrupt the effect and hit that gold carrot. All that stuff goes into there. And when the ingredients arrive at a, at a brewing stand, this light turns on and you hear a tone. Uh, that tone lets you know that all the ingredients have safely arrived and you can make a new potion and it will get uh, directed to the appropriate, uh, the next brewing stand. Uh, and so let's just make a few more. Let's make, uh, let's turn on the splash and let's make a, a big potion of, uh, of harming, splash potion of harming two. So that turns on everything, and maybe we want to make a potion of uh, potion of poison, poison two, and then after we do that, once the items arrive, then it resets all this, and when we make the next potion, say if it's a uh, just a extended regeneration potion. The items get put into this hopper and it's ready to start making it once I take my speed potion. So let's just check on all our potions here. Looks like our fire resistance is done. Uh, our water breathing is done. Uh, looks like our invisibility just finished. And the uh, splash potion of harming and the splash potion of poison are still brewing. And if you want to reset to the first brewer manually, you can just hit this button and uh, the next potion you brew will be brewed in this stand over here. Now the way it works basically is uh, whenever you hit a button, it's going to uh, dispense all the ingredients for the potion down here. They're going to travel down this main hopper chain and they're going to be directed into one of these brewing stands down here. Um, so when you hit that button, uh, the nether wart gets dispensed from this dispenser up here. The main ingredient uh, gets dispensed from one of these dispensers over here. And also all the modifier ingredients come in from one of these four dispensers over here. Uh, so that's uh, glowstone, redstone, and the gunpowder, and the uh, fermented spider eyes. And when you hit one of these buttons, it's going to travel up a small vertical uh, torch uh, column. There's actually another torch uh, beneath this block over here. It's kind of hard to get to, but uh, yeah, you can see them over there. Um, and what I'll, that'll do is it'll do two things. It'll first dispense the main ingredient item and then just trigger this main pulse. So any one of these, it'll it'll power this block from this torch and it'll power this whole line over here. So any main ingredient will power this whole pulse line and the pulse line does several things. Uh, the first thing it does is it travels, it splits up and travels up here and goes through all this logic over here to dispense the correct potions depending on which uh, levers you've pulled. Uh, so this, this tower over here is for the redstone glowstone. Um, it'll, it has some and gates over here to d dispense one based on which way it's going. Uh, then there's a few more AND gates over here for the, um, uh, the gunpowder and the fermented spider eyes. 
Also, the pulse splits off and goes down here for this whole system. This whole system is for making sure that each time you hit the button to dispense a potion, it's going to go into a different uh, brewing stand. Uh, so, uh, it's going to do first, it's going to go through this monostable circuit to shorten the pulse, uh, and then it's going to go down here and hit all of these. Uh, sticky pistons. Uh, this is something that was on the Iron Trench and also uh, Seth Blaine did it in his menorah. But every time it gets a pulse, uh, each one of these lines, one more line, is going to light up. So I'll demonstrate here, like if I hit a main ingredient, uh, it very quickly goes up. Now this piston is, is extended uh, and this has power. And if it hit it again, there'll be a very brief pulse and one more piston will be left up here. Uh, and now this line is getting power. So the end effect is every time you hit this, hit any main ingredient, uh, it's going to power one additional line. And so now just this power, this hopper is powered. Uh, so all the ingredients uh, are going to go into this hopper instead because this won't be able to suck the ingredients out of the main line here. So if I hit it again, it'll uh, power another line, it'll go up into this one instead. And the whole thing is handled by a reset over here, so uh, it's getting power from this torch, so if I want to, there's actually a button behind that wall here, so when I hit that, it'll release the power for a little bit, and allow all the pistons to retract. Now there's also the system where it resets back to the first brewer after putting the items in the last one. Uh, and so what's happening here is you you're hitting the you're hitting a button down here. It's triggering the pulse. It's going to turn on this line to make sure all the items that come down this line go into this last hopper. Uh, hopper chain over here. It's going to put the items in here. That's going to power this redstone lamp. Uh, that redstone lamp is going to set off this monostable circuit, which is going to make a short pulse come down here and under the whole thing and come up here and trigger this whole reset. So this is going to come up here, turn this torch off, and then allow all these pistons to go down and allow the item to go back into that first hopper. So we'll press the button here to simulate like a main ingredient button press. So it lights that up. The ingredients are going to come down this hopper line. They show up here. That triggers this pulse down here. And then all the all the pistons have retracted, and now the item can show up in this uh, first brewing stand again. Now finally, there's the simplest part, the water bottle refill system. You just got a bunch of mass storage, a bunch of water bottles in here. They feed down over here into this hopper chain. Uh, it goes down back behind over here, and there's also little branches off that go down and into the sides of the each of the brewing stands. So this is just sort of to make it work so that I can fit in these uh, comparators here to show when they're brewing. And that's pretty much it. You can just fill them up uh, down here and throw them all in, in this upper chest and they'll all just uh, refill when you take any potions out. Alright, now let's build this thing. So inside this chest we've got everything we need to make the brewer. It's a little bit heavy on the iron, um, a lot of hoppers. You can actually replace the main hopper line with a water stream with ice underneath if you want. It's a little bit slower and less reliable, but it's kind of cool seeing all the items slow down the stream. A little bit harder to do though. Uh, this is just a guess on the amount of stone bricks you'll need. You can, of course, make it out of anything you want. I find stone bricks is pretty easy because it's pretty easy to get cobblestone. Uh, you can also extend it out. I made it with six brewers. You can make it with more. Uh, this is the amount you'll need to make it with six. Um, there really isn't any um, any reason why you can't make more. Uh, after a while, it doesn't become as useful, though. Uh, then, of course, you just uh, any number of brewing ingredients that you want. I find that if you find a if you fill a hopper full of ingredients, it's going to make 32 double chests of potions, which is pretty good. So I didn't really bother with any sort of refill mechanism. Anyway, let's get started. We're going to start with the uh, last brewing stand. Uh, let's replace that down here. Put uh, four uh, hoppers on top of it. Three more out to the side. And then we're going to start on the main line over here. So we're just going to go out like a whole bunch of hoppers. Uh, and then 
you're just going to put all the other brewing stands the same way. Uh, four up, and then uh, three over. And once that's done, you want to extend out this main hopper line nine more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, and then we want to place the droppers. They're going to be facing into the hopper line over here. There we go. And then these blocks behind here, uh, behind the hoppers are going to be what's powering, uh, behind the droppers are going to be what's powering them. Uh, because if you have like a repeater or repower power a dropper uh, directly, it's going to power all the droppers next to it. Um, so we just have a repeater going into here, into each of these blocks. And some torches over here. And then some more torches. So we're going to have a little vertical repeater. Put some buttons on the inside. And then finally some blocks up here. So what's going to happen is they're going to hit this button. It's going to go and power this block, which goes and powers this block, and hits this dropper. And then you just do the same thing on the other side. All right, now that we've got that done, we want to make our another wart dropper. So we're going to place it over here, up in front of all the other main ingredient droppers. Uh, and we want to get power from back here uh, all the way over to the, uh, to the dropper. So we just make a little bridge uh, over here. We actually want this one to be a half slab so as to avoid powering the hoppers. And then we just make a little shelf over here to put all the redstone on. And a repeater here. So now, when any of these droppers are powered, it'll also power these blocks, which will make this line go over here, and it's going to power this dropper, which is going to drop the nether wart in in front of any of these main ingredients. All right, now we want to put in the droppers for the modifier ingredients, the redstone and glowstone and all that. Uh, and gunpowder and, and fermented spider eyes that are going going to go in after the main ingredient. So what they're just going to do is they're just going to fall into the main hopper line from these droppers over here. And so we place those over here. And now we've got those, we need to get the signal up to them. So for that, we're going to build the all our switchers over here. So put a three out over this way and then make the back wall over here. Put a lever in the center and then off to each side. And now we want to start building the uh, towers, the tr vertical transmission towers to get the signal up there uh, to build the logic to tell them if they can drop or not. So we're going to make each of these uh, four torches high. So that's three and then for torch, and this one is going to get extra. It's going to go a bit higher. And now we want to make the line over here. And this has got to go back around. we got to make another transmission tower uh, for the main pulse signal to get up over here, or else you'd have some more ugly wiring to do that. And we're just going to place some redstone on top of there for now. And over here, we're going to get some redstone, repeater, uh, block, another repeater. And this one is also going to go up like so. Put some redstone on top. And we'll just connect all this out over here. And now we've got our signals ready, and we're ready to build the logic to um, power the droppers or not. All right, now we're going to do the logic for the redstone and glowstone droppers. I first want to connect these two signals over here, and then we want to uh, bring this signal over this way, get a torch here, replace this with a repeater, 
and what that's going to do is make it so that when the pulse comes along this line is unpowered for briefly uh, and then if this torch is also unpowered this torch is going to get powered for a little bit and uh, trigger the dropper here. Now we also want to do the same thing uh, up here and uh, bring the line up a little bit and connect this over this way and connect this over there Get a torch here and redstone over this way and this is going to do a similar thing uh, to where this line is going to be unpowered briefly when the pulse comes along and if this torch is also off then this torch is going to get to blink on for a little bit and trigger this dropper over here so if you can if you switch it over here uh, this torch is going to be off now which means that when the pulse comes along this dropper will fire but the other dropper won't so that's going to switch between the glowstone down here and the redstone up here and uh, one important thing you might have noticed that I did is I put a hash lab up here and a, a repeater over here and that's important because we don't want the signal from this um, uh, this torch over here to pollute the gate up here or for the signal from this torch to pollute the gate down there. Alright, now we'll do the logic for the gunpowder and fermented spider eyes. Now first we want to hook up these two signals over here. I get a repeater and the rest dust. And then we want to get a torch over here, half lab over here to make sure we don't power any dropper down there and then we're going to split it out and we need to make a half slab right on the top there we need to make another half slab up here and I'm going to make uh, put some close on redstone on top of there put a torch over this way and some redstone over there, and to separate these lines, just put another block over there. Uh, now this should do a similar thing, except that there are two different lines uh, that are toggling a, uh, a the droppers on and off. So this line over here is going to toggle this dropper on and off, and this line over here is going to toggle this dropper on and off uh, to whenever it gets a pulse. So right now, uh, they are both uh, both of these lines over here are getting uh, n no power uh, from that torch or that torch which means that they're both enabled so if we want to disable them just go down here uh, flick down those torches and now both of those lines are powered and they uh, these droppers can't drop anything and a couple things I forgot you should make uh, one more layer over here to make sure that the items uh, don't rest on top of it and they just fall down the chute cleanly and you should change this repeater down here to three ticks to make sure that it has enough delay uh, to make sure that they come in after the main ingredient. Alright, now we're all done with the dropper logic. We just need to work on the logic to get the ingredients to the brewing stand that we want. So let's line ourselves to the second brewing stand here and then just behind this wall of buttons place a block down there and then we're going to place uh, three blocks this way in a zigzag pattern, so one, two, three and then you can mark this with the redstone here and then five blocks this way so one two three four five and then we're just going to put redstone on top of everything place a couple more blocks at the ends and now we're going to place uh, sticky pistons uh, alternating uh, like so these are going to be the sort of memory cells to figure out which brewing stand sh uh, should be active. And I just put a bunch of solid blocks over here. A couple more solid blocks over this way. It's going to be a redstone torch. It's going to power the whole thing. Repeater, and then repeaters everywhere there a, a piston is not. Like so. And now we want to set all these repeaters to two ticks. Uh, this one can stay in one tick. And then we need to get some half slabs uh, out 
uh, to get the signal out to the hoppers. So just put three half slabs everywhere you see a piston. And then just put redstone all over here. And then also put a redstone uh, dot of redstone dust right here. And then you want to put lamps in front of each piston. So when the piston is raised, uh, it'll it's going to power uh, this this dust over here, which is going to go and power this hopper, and also uh, turn the light on to let you know that it's powering that hopper. All right, now we want to hook up the main pulse to this thing. So first we're going to put some dust over there, torch over here. We're going to make a monostable circuit uh, to shorten the pulse a little bit before we get it down there. So we're going to put a repeater here on three ticks, put some more dust over here, put a redstone torch, a block and some dust over here, and bring this dust over this way, and another repeater to get the signal all the way to all these pistons. So when the pulse fires, it should fire all these pistons for a little bit. Uh, and then we want to uh, hook up the reset button. So we could put a button over here and a bunch of redstone dust over here. So now say if we trigger this main pulse, it's going to put one additional block up each time, powering an additional hopper. Uh, but we can go down here and briefly unpower this torch, uh, which lets them all retract. Now we're going to do the system of lights and notes that tell us when a brewing stand is working. So let's just put a couple blocks behind each brewing stand, and then comparators coming out of the hopper above the brewing stand, then redstone lamps coming out of all the comparators, and note blocks on top of each one. And I like to leave this one uh, 0, this one 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And uh, then you can test it out just by putting some item in here. You should turn the light on and make a noise. The noise is going to be different based on which uh, brewing stand you use. And now we'll do the water bottle refill system. First we want to put a uh, hopper pointing into the side of each brewing stand. It's going to insert the water bottles. And now we've got to make it so that one source is going to feed all of these. Uh, so we just put uh, another hopper on the side of each to get it out over here. And then we're going to want to uh, make this go up a couple and then just make this one main line go across. So each of these hoppers on the top should be pointing uh, sideways. Uh, and then uh, we just go get this last one over here and get this going up this way, like so. And then we can start placing the storage. So we get some chests. Hopper pointing to the side. Whoops. Uh, some more chests. And then uh, that's pretty much it. And then you can just fill it up. Just get some water source nearby. Uh, get your glass bottles. Fill up your inventory. And just uh, shift double click up in here. And then they'll all flow into the system. You just got to do that enough times uh, to where it starts backing up into the chest, and you got a good storage of them. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. It's pretty easy to get a lot of glass if you go to if you find a desert. And once you've got the whole system filled up with water bottles, um, only the only additional ones you're going to need are for the ones you made potions for. And if you've got it all filled in, it should be something like this, where you take out water bottles and it just refills them automatically. All right, now the only thing left to do is fill in all the ingredients. We want to put the nether wart over here, and each of the main ingredients into one of these uh, eight droppers. 
doesn't really matter which order, just as long as you label them correctly afterward. And up here, you want on the left side redstone or glowstone. Uh, it doesn't matter which order, just as long as you get it on the correct side. And over here you want gunpowder or fermented spider eyes. Again, it doesn't really matter as long as you get it on the correct side. And this will switch between redstone and glowstone and fermented spider eyes and gunpowder, depending on which one you put it in. Uh, you can just test it out. Uh, let's see if we got it working. Let's uh, get one of these potions. Looks like we got uh, sugar, another wart and sugar, so it's making a glowstone speed potion. Uh, so let's flip the red to redstone. Take one of these. And... Yeah, looks like it's working, making a redstone magma cream potion. So, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And um, just leave any comment in the on the video if you're having trouble or anything. And I'd be happy to help you out uh, if you have any questions or anything. Um, happy brewing!